Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this particular lecture, we are going to talk about receptor-mediated endocytosis. Okay, so we'll start with uh, the receptor-mediated endocytosis. We'll understand the basics of receptor-mediated endocytosis, how exactly it is done. And we'll also see one example of this receptor-mediated endocytosis and uh, that is clathrin coated endocytosis or clathrin mediated endocytosis we will also see that in the next video but let's first understand the receptor mediated endocytosis the word endocytosis means engulfing something or internalization of something by the cell right by forming vesicles or clefts okay so what i can uh, draw here what i can tell you here is that let's imagine that this is the cell and uh, there are something that is present outside of the cell that the cell wants to eat cell wants to take up okay either you can say cell one wants to eat or you can say the cell want to take up so for that purpose what this cell will do is that cell will do this okay and their cell is going to engulf it inside okay this internalization will be done this is endocytosis okay and generally endocytosis means engulfing something or taking something in by the cell uh, equivalent to cellular eating or drinking now the endocytosis can be classified as uh, you know uh, pinocytosis and phagocytosis it is called as uh, it is called as a phagocytosis when uh, there is large or solid solid particles ingested it is called pinocytosis pinocytosis when uh, they take liquid substances okay that is endocytosis as a general idea so when the macrophage which is a immune system cell is going to engulf a bacteria eats the bacteria the bacteria is solid as per this uh, classification so macrophage eating a bacteria is an example of phagocytosis so phagocytosis and pinocytosis both are examples of what endocytosis now what we intend to talk about is the endocytosis mechanism how exactly so endocytosis mechanism is very simple the cell uh, rearrange its cellular components they rearrange the cytoskeleton elements like uh, like microfilaments like actin filaments they try to push from this both sides of this so this is the arrow depicting how exactly the actin filaments rearrange in order to create a cleft or a vesicular cleft like this once the cleft is formed the membrane fuse and the vesicle takes up the particle inside whether the particle is large or uh, i mean particle is solid or liquid it takes the particle inside this is uh, the receptor mediated endocytosis the idea of the receptor mediated endocytosis uh, i mean the idea of endocytosis in a general but what about receptor mediated when we use this term receptor mediated that means the endocytosis by the cell is uh, regulated the endocytosis can be regulated or can be without any regulation but when it is regulated by uh, some sort of signaling molecule then it is called as receptor mediated endocytosis for example a phagocytic cell like macrophage eating a bacteria uh, is like the presence of bacterial components on the surface that is known as pathogen associated molecular patterns or TAMs okay like toll like receptors are present in the surface and they detect the different components and body parts of the pathogen and sense that this is the pathogen so let's engulf it so this is one just example of that for example uh, if there is a hormone released if there is a hormone released uh, and received by the receptor then the receptor is starting to uh, act according to the plan of the hormones release and the receptor now start to receive the hormone and they initiate release of further hormones so the whole uh, different glands of our body for example the pituitary is regulating a uh, thyroid gland adrenal gland so the hormone based signaling process also is kind of following the idea of this receptor mediated uh, processes and in that case 
sometimes the hormones uh, effect or the growth factors effect is visible in case of receptor mediated endocytosis so upon receiving a signal in terms of a protein that's a hormone then the endocytosis process is triggered the endocytosis process is only triggered when they receive some signal in form of some hormone or some components okay so the, in the receptor mediated endocytosis the idea is very simple i'll draw this membrane here for you so this is the membrane okay and in the membrane we have this receptor okay and let's say to this receptor a signaling molecule binds a ligand binds okay a ligand binds to the receptor ligand binds to the receptor and upon binding of the ligand to the receptor then the process of internalization the process of internalization will begin okay Internal, internalization means basically what we are, we were trying to do here is that rearrangement of this membrane it is a rearrangement of this membrane the rearrangement of the membrane will be done and whatever particle that is present out there whatever particle that is out there need to be taken will be taken inside through this process and for this receptor mediated endocytosis uh, what we need to do as a cell their membrane need to be modified the membrane needs to be modified means the membrane structure need to be altered in such a way that they form vesicle in the cytosolic site inside of the cell they should form a vesicle and for the formation of this kind of vesicles they need proper rearrangement of the cytoskeleton elements like microfilaments like actin filaments also they need uh, so either either you can do the cellular uh, rearrangement by these microfilaments or you need a dedicated proteins to form this cleft what is called as cleft remember this is known as the formation of the cleft so cleft forming proteins are required okay cleft forming proteins and those uh, proteins are known as either cop proteins example is cop1 cop2 involved in the process of uh, the uh, anterograde and retrograde pathways respectively and there are other proteins known as clathrin clathrin protein is also involved well clathrin protein's job is to again form this cleft and uh, snatch uh, any particle uh, whether it is solid or liquid inside of the cell that is something that we need to do that is something that we need to be done okay so this is an idea of the receptor uh, mediated endocytosis where the ligand binds to the receptor then the the, the cleft is formed and then they take the solid or liquid uh, particles inside now for the formation of the cleft as i told you that the rearrangement of the membrane of phospholipid is important so the membrane need to be really dynamic in the area of this receptor mediated endocytosis the membrane fluidity need to be high membrane needs to be very much dynamic in this area so they should carry more cholesterol more sphingolipids instead of phospholipids as well phospholipids will be there but sphingolipid cholesterols are also required in this area and the third thing is that after the end at the end of the formation of this cleft they need to clip it off right to clip the cleft off they need to seal it right here so i'll take a different color so need to seal it here right so to clip it they need proteins like dynamine dynamine protein is required which can snatch this vesicle out or clip it out it's like formation of this vesicle and then you use a scissor so dynamine act as a uh, protein with scissor effect or clipping effect that cause the vesicle to cut out from this formation okay that is uh, the receptor mediated endocytosis for you now i'll also tell you the importance of this uh, receptor mediated endocytosis to you as well i'll also tell that tell you that uh, here we have the examples of receptor mediated endocytosis some of the examples for you ldl uptake uptake of low density lipoprotein ldl binds to the ldl receptor okay ldl receptor is there in the surface and ldl low density lipoprotein binds to it the vesicle transport ldl to lysosomes 
where the cholesterol is released because the LDL or low density lipoprotein is rich in cholesterol. It is a bad protein and if more and more LDL is circulating in your bloodstream that is alarming for your heart condition or heart diseases. So the LDL binds to the LDL receptors and then the vesicle transport this LDL to the lysosome and when the LDL is fused with the lysosome the LDL components are released and that is the end pro process of uh, any receptor mediated endocytosis is the final step where the vesicle which is internalized need to be fused with the lysosome because once the vesicle is formed and clipped out it is vesicle is now in the cytosol it is known as the endosome the, the vesicle that is formed via the endocytosis is called endosome early endosome it is called the early endosome and this early endosome is going to fuse with the lysosome the lysosome is a basically enzyme hydrolytic enzyme filled sac in the cell so once this early endosome remember this is the vesicle this is early endosome and let's say that this is lysosome okay lysosome it, it is filled with uh, enzymes hydrolytic enzymes like proteases nucleases uh, lipases okay all things are there so now this endo uh, early endosome fuse with this lysosome this fusion is important for example if ldl is present in the early endosome fusion of this vesicle with ldl with the lysosome cause uh, the release so the fusion will be there let me draw the fusion with this two colors here like this okay and with this fusion cholesterol gets separated from other lipids out there like triacylglycerols are also there the tags are separated cholesterols are separated now the cholesterol will be separately metabolized by the cell uh, by by the by our body in a different manner so that ldl uptake is one example of receptor mediated endocytosis transferrin mediated iron uptake transferrin is a iron binding protein binds that binds to the iron blocks the iron for the body because iron is necessary for our hemoglobin central structure okay and iron is released in endosomes and transferrin receptor complexes are recycled via the receptor mediated endocytosis so again in the cell surface we have transferrin receptor iron binds to it it gets internalized once the internalization is done after the internalization is done then what happens basically recycling so uh, again fusion fusion causes the release of iron so the cell takes up iron with the help of the transferrin mediated iron uptake this is the approach of how our cell takes the iron and that is how it is done third one is hormone internalization hormones like growth factors epidermal growth factor egf that binds to the egf receptor now ligand receptor complex are degraded again that is uptaken inside the cell so in the cell again what will happen inside the vesicle we have this uh, egf receptor and we have this egf okay and once this is fused with the lysosome lysosome this fusion is done upon this fusion what happens uh, when the big uh, after this fusion this egf gets released right in the late endosome this egf will be released in the cytosol of the cell same way if the receptor is transferring then iron will bind and then this vesicle will fuse with the lysosome that will cause the iron to be released the iron will be released in the cell so this process continues in various different places in the body various different places uh, in ldl update uh, uptake in transferrin mediated iron uptake of the cell hormonal uptake or let's say growth factor uptake epidermal growth factor human growth factor there are multiple growth factor uptake all follow this receptor mediated endocytosis now the reason to follow or utilize receptor mediated endocytosis over normal mode is that the receptor mediated endocytosis is like a very regulated process it's like i want to get inside a, a room or a home i need to show id card for that or i need to have the key for that when the key uh, perfectly opens the lock then only i can enter here the ligands that we are seeing are opening the lock that is the receptor and then only it is allowed to get inside the cell okay now you see the 
functional roles of receptor mediated endocytosis the nutrient uptake we saw example where they are uptaking uh, not exactly nutrient but it's a mineral in the in our example that we saw the iron uptake one example of that okay cholesterol uptake vitamin uptake all uptake is, can be done with the receptor mediated endocytosis regulation of receptor levels now the number of receptors that should be present in the surface of the cell can be regulated with the receptor mediated endocytosis because after the internalization of irons cholesterols or all the vitamins and minerals they need to recycle the receptor back to the surface of the membrane that is also being done that is also being done by these uh, receptor mediated endocytosis signal transduction again obviously because the ligand is binding to the receptor that allows the possibilities of signal transduction in the cell and uh, related to the ligands for the propagation or termination pathways and immune defenses pathogens exploit receptor mediated endocytosis to enter the host cells like viruses and toxins they bind to the receptor because they know if they successfully bind to receptor xyz the receptor is going to allow them to be internalized via the receptor mediated endocytosis so these receptors there are some receptors in our body which are being targeted by virus which are being targeted by uh, different toxins also to get internalized inside the tissue to damage them inside the host to damage them so this is these are the functional roles of receptor mediated endocytosis i believe you have a clear idea of receptor mediated endocytosis now if you wish to understand one more example or explanation of this receptor mediated endocytosis that is a clathrin mediated endocytosis or clathrin mediated protein uptake uh, or clathrin mediated uptake inside the cell then watch my video on clathrin mediated endocytosis right after this video and if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.